this is kind of like what it was like to uh, FaceTime with my father. Just shout out to the old man. But this is what it was like. Hello. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, once again to the Monkey Shine Lab, and we've got a few things to talk about here as per usual, and maybe even a few things to do. Um, when we were out at the flea market last, um, my wife picked up a bag of toys from, um, I want to say that this was from our favorite vendors there at the fair, but I'm not sure. She picked this up. Yeah, you know, looks like a bag of building blocks, and it is, but it's a special set of building blocks, and it, it sort of runs along the same lines. It reminds me of Tinker Toys, so if you're not familiar with Tinker Toys, Tinker Toys were a wood building system which had... Um, axes and lots of sticks and you could put the sticks into the axes and, and make them connect to do you know different size things they were made out of wood and that's kind of been our axe to grind our shield to bang our megaphone to be running out here to the community is that we need to start pushing for toys of all sorts, at least for the early ages of our children, maybe, to be made. Because, I mean, these are the ones that kids just, you know, you use them for a little while and then your kids grow out of them. Um, when I go to Goodwill and lots of other resale shops, I see a ton of plastic toys that kids have grown out of. And if you're going to grow out of something, you know, I do appreciate that it goes to the Goodwill because then people like myself, uh, collectors or fans can pick it up. But this really struck me as a great idea. It's built along, like I said, the Tinker Toy lines. Um, and if you don't know about Tinker Toys, they used a split join at the ends of their sticks, much like this where it's kind of nubbed out at the end, but there's also a split in the middle so that the wood actually gives. This makes a system whereby you can take another piece that has a, excuse me, that has a, uh, a, a fitting port and pop it on there. And the um, pieces stay together, okay? So with this set, Okay, there are lots of different little body types. And there are lots of little different uh, faces and heads. So you can pop them together like this. Let's see if I can find a... I'll use this head. Um, and you can make your own um, little people. Um, and your own little superheroes and stuff, okay? These fit together in endless combinations. There are a bunch of different body types, a bunch of different heads, a bunch of different legs, arms, and like driver belts and stuff like that. Some of this stuff looks like, like the inside of a tape machine. Um, there's a lot going on here. I mean, you know, you could use this as a headpiece, as, as eyes for a Wally -E character, okay? Um, these are very brightly painted, very imaginatively done, and of course there's no <laughs> maker's mark on them anywhere, so we don't know who made them. My wife, again, picked them up at the flea market. So, um, first off, if you recognize these pieces, please let me know what these are, if you've ever seen them before, or if you know the artist who made them, because they're really well-crafted. There's a lot of pieces here, and I would love, honestly, for my own. I sat and played with these things for quite a while, and I got a lot out of it. Um, just 
in terms, and, and it took me a minute, you know, like I, I, put, I put all the pieces out on my, on my bench. I should have probably filmed it. But what I wanted to see was if these things could entertain me and if they could amuse me in terms of my be, being able to create a little robot or something out of them, then, you know, could they not then also take the place of plastic? At, and, and again, at least in the early parts of your child's life where you want things that are rounded and, and not dangerous, you want stuff that is not painted in lead, you want stuff that maybe hasn't come from China, you know? Um, and these, I, I gotta say, I, it, they feel like a, a local, a local artisan made them. Um, so again, if anybody recognizes that stuff, I would really appreciate knowing who made them because I'd like to, I'd like to talk to them about them. Um, it is closer, one step closer, I think, to what I conceive for maybe not my grandkids because they're growing up so quickly. Um, but at least maybe the the two younger ones right now, um, and maybe for for their kids by by the time we get to their kids, maybe we can be off of the plastic in terms of our entertainment quite so much. Um, and you know, I'll tell you what, that's a very difficult thing for me to say. I come from a different generation where everything of entertainment was made from plastic. And it's why it's around today, 55 years later, some of it in startlingly beautiful condition. Stuff lasts forever. So I really like the idea of the, of the model that I put together uh, the other day of the triplane. You know, I took the runners for those parts and I, I put them out in my wife's uh, worm, uh, worm farm for them to break down and for our sun and our weather to get at, which will also break it down in record time. Um, you've never seen, you've never seen anything get wrecked by sun and rain than you have here in the valley. <laughs> it's unbelievable, it really is. Okay, um, moving on to uh, something else. Ah, uh, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than cello music, is there? Come along with me! I've got to get Drano. We've got a real problem with uh, every time, every time a holiday weekend is coming up, like a three-day holiday weekend, that's when your plumbing will choose to just go bunko. So, uh, anyway, I gotta go to the box store, pick up some Drano. I just uploaded a damn episode that was too short, and this could have extended it, so... I'm making a no whole nother episode. Jiminy Cricket. Oh. Let's go! Uh, so here we go now.
Yeah, there's like, I kind of look, but you can tell it's completely picked through stuff. <clears throat> I mean, it is a Saturday. Everyone probably picked this through yesterday. Yeah. Ooh, here's the thing I kind of wanted. What is it? It's a 60 Chrysler 300F, but it's like a, I don't know, it's, it's just cool. Yeah, it's cool seeing. It's SRT. It is. Cameron, man. Yeah. Um. One, th one further thing that I wanted to say here um, concerning, um, you know, perishable models and, and stuff like that, perishable. Um, in, in, in talking about um, hobbies, uh, but turning them more over to wood, you know, I, like I built that triplane and you probably, if you've looked at any of these things, You've seen like the, um, they have like a, a howling wolf in 3D. They've got a shark, you know, they've got lots of, you know, different wildlife and stuff like that. But you're like, man, uh, yeah, great. So wood, you can make old airplanes and animals. What if I want to build something science fiction-y? What if I want to build a Gundam? What if I want to build you know, I have good news. Yes, that's right. The people who make these models are starting to learn that the people who will buy anything with the name on it are Star Trek fans. I'm not going to call them Trekkers. I'm not going to call them Trekkies. I'm going to call them Star Trek fans because calling them anything other than that sometimes gets noses super bad. But check this out. I got an Enterprise to build. That's pretty cool. Um, and it's the basic sames as uh, the uh, triplane. The uh, back however says that I uh, I can punch out the pieces I can make the model I can paint it mm -hmm. and um, which I will probably do with this one and it comes with a book which is kind of cool um, some sort of Star Trek book I don't know um, but again this was I'm trying to remember how much it was but uh, comes from a company called Incredibuilds and um, I can't wait. This is this is the next one I'm gonna do like this, um, because I had I had success with the uh, with the with the triplane. So here we go. We're gonna build the Enterprise. Not on this episode. I'm gonna do this. You know, I'm gonna. This is gonna be bench report stuff because I don't. I want to take my time doing this one. I'm not gonna knock it out of the park. By the way. I did want to say, um, if you watched the uh, Gundam build that I did recently, because I don't really cover a lot of Gundam-oriented stuff on this channel, though I'm a huge fan, um, that was the first time I ever, ever sat down and just cranked one out. Um, wow, let me rephrase that. That's the first time I sat down and really turned out a model, start to finish, opening the box to finishing it with all the stickers and posing it, taking pictures and stuff. Um, I really like to take my time with these things and I probably, even with that EZ, the, uh, the Gundam build that I did, I would have taken more time with it. It would have probably taken me more like two or three days of just, you know, okay, I'm gonna do the the hips, I'm gonna do the legs on this, I'm gonna do this. But the those um, entry grade builds that I did were, were, first of all, really, really well designed. Um, if you haven't watched that episode, I'm not trying to get you to go backwards necessarily, but you should go back a couple episodes and watch that Gundam build. Anyway, the next one on the uh, bench here, I'm super excited, is going to be the wooden representation of the Enterprise 3D model. So that's going to be fun. 
Um, anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about there. Let's change this camera angle and let's talk about something different. Uh, one more thing I wanted to do for this episode um, was to open another thing that my wife picked up. My wife and I picked up at um, Target. No, it's not this awesome Among Us figure. Um, though, he was also scored at the Target. Whatever. Um, I'm just going to keep these in frame for the sake of framing. So, uh, this is what we're actually talking about here, though. Um, I have built a lot of uh, Gundam stuff, and but I've not, I have not really bought a lot of the sort of already made toys and I believe that's what this is is just a figure it has a light in the eye um it is a Zaku so these are sort of the quote unquote bad guys um depends on your perspective and uh but anyway there's a there is an RX-78 Looks like there are two different versions of the 78. And then there is a version with uh, the Zaku and Char's Zaku. So it says required. Uh, batteries are included. So it should work. Oop. Sorry there, Amerida, America Gundam. Um, so it should work right out of the box, right? So I'm not going to save the box. I'm simply going to pull the figure from it. Oop. Drop it on the floor. Um, does look like there's some assembly required. Uh -huh. And another thing about how to put the batteries in. Alright. This is an unboxing. I'll tell you what. Um, there's the battery pack. That's cool because replacing batteries is often a pain in the ass. So if this thing just pops right out and I can replace those batteries when I need to, that's perfect. Um, looks like an arm. Uh, I was really hoping that there would be less in the way of all this inside the box, but I guess it's better than clamshell plastic. I don't, I don't know. Um, I suppose I should look that up with a, before I claim it. Um, but here's the rifle. Oops. Snap the rifle barrel off. I'm impatient. And I don't really care about the weapons. <laughs> I don't. I put a... I'll put the ax in his hand, you know? I don't, I don't care about this. Uh, <laughs> okay, it comes sort of, um, sort of put together. Um, already has the ax handle partially in his hand, so that's, it's the way I would have gone anyway. Um, they give you an extra arm in here in case you wanna just um, have the gun in that hand, I guess. But, um... <laughs> I like the axe. Um, just things are dropping like flies off of this thing. Um, I don't know that that was meant to... meant to come off of there. Um, and made it, right? What the hell is going on here? Got that going on. 
That is so weird. Oh, I see, because the fist is turned upside down. Duh. All right, so. <laughs> okay, I got the arm on. flimsy so first thing i'm gonna say is that the uh pieces fit together very flimsy okay this is this thing is falling apart right and left as i touch it um There's no real bend happening to that. Um, but how do I do the batteries then? I guess that's, that's the question. Did you even go? How does this work? I'm completely stumped. <laughs> okay, look, there's an arm, another armature, and this is the battery, but I guess I should have looked into this a little more before starting to, starting to film. Um, okay, so that's the little LED, and I'm assuming it's got to get into his... Seriously, like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is so not going well. Um... <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Start again. Uh. Hi! Welcome to... Welcome to Monkey Chen Lab, where we uh, where we just dive right in. Oh God, now he's missing a foot somewhere. Quick, oh there it is. Okay, first off, I can see that this is going to need some bonding glue to it here and there. Um, the <coughs> the pieces are static. Okay, there's no, there's no joints. So if you're going to buy one of these, they don't, you can't pose them. Um, and, uh, and they come apart. <laughs> uh, they come apart real easily. So, um, anyway, uh, what I did figure out here is that there's a cavity and a light source. So I'm assuming that this goes in here, but I don't know how you make it light up. Oh, there's a little switch. Okay, that's handy. So you just kind of turn them on, dead man. Oh. 
Oh, gosh. Um, enough jokes. Comedy. All right. This body cavity thing, obviously, this fits in here somehow. Um, probably it screws in somehow some way oh i see it actually fits down in here like a candle holder like that and then you put the and then you get the and then the get the uh, feet to form up the arms are oh my god the arms are all staying on nope okay screwed that up but uh, once I get the arm back on I'm just gonna stand him here and, it, and I'll give you a little bit of a, uh, a flyby on it um, the way it looks is way cool. Um, it's super flimsy. So there's, it, 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 you know, this is not going to be something that you play with. This is going to be something that you probably just sort of stand around and then you go, hey, look, it's got a, it's got a light thing on it. And I'm going to open it up because it's a real pain in the ass and turn on the light now. Um, and have the leg fall off. So... Um, Okay, final call I'm gonna say on these for 10 bucks. It is a neat toy. It is a, a very detailed and cool representation of a Zaku. Um, I do like all of the uh, detail and armor that's put into it. But at the end of it, what you're getting is a statue. This is, uh, there's, there's very little about this that you're gonna do um, any static poses of and, uh, or, you know, action poses of, um, I'm having a war, uh, break out all around me with my animals. So I'm going to end this segment and I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it good. Um, I got this Haku's eye to light up finally. Um, it's cool. That's neat. Um, I don't feel the need necessarily to pick up any of the other ones. That, this was a good test. But for real, if I'm gonna do the Gundam thing, I'm going to, to build one that can actually, um, you know, take on some action poses um, with, with relative ease and not lose an arm or a leg or a foot, you know? I mean, these, once you make these action figures, they are much more dynamic than what you're gonna get if you buy a pre-made um, with a light up in it, okay? You can you can make, by the way, they, they sell kits that you can install these tiny lights in. And I'll tell you what, those, those tiny LEDs, that might be worth the investment right there. But um, again, between this and this, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the kit side every time. Um, this is cool, and I will stand him up somewhere and turn the light off, and probably never turn it on again until one of my grandkids asks about it. Uh, but anyway, there it is. Um, I would definitely say uh, it's ten bucks. Are do you have ten dollars for this? That's the question. And I've got a phone call coming in. <laughs> um, that's all we got for you. That's all there is. It's me and my dyspeptic condition. Um, my final thought on that uh, on that Zaku. It's it's not quite worth ten bucks. It's a neat little statue. Um, if it had a little more flexibility without falling apart quite so much, I might have said that, yes, this is a neat little gizmo for you to put on your desk at work. Um, but honestly, 
it falls apart too much. The lighting effect is interesting, it's nice. Um, and it also kind of shows you how you could do it with your own models. So again, I would choose to build one of those Gundam models and incorporate an LED light into it rather than going out and buying one of these. So there it is. Um, folks, if you like what you see here, you know what to do. Like and share and subscribe. And it really helps us if you leave a comment while you're watching. If you like what you see, if you don't like what you see, talk to us. We'd like to talk to you. And um, to everybody that's our regulars out there, we absolutely love you. Thank you very much for sticking with us. Thank you very much for coming back every day to check us out and comment. We really appreciate it. Anyway, that's all I got for you right now. I'm going to start filming another episode almost instantly because it's the time that I have here during the rainstorm. Well, that's all we've got for you here on Monkey Shine Lab today, everybody. I know, I know, time flies when we're having fun and things are falling apart. And my hand's like, oh my God. Final verdict is I wouldn't buy one of those. It's 10 bucks. Go uh, spend seven more, eight more, and get an actual Gundam model and build it. A lot more fun. Put the LED in yourself, you know. Um, Actually, I, I, have a, I have a model that I've been wondering how I could get the eye to light up, and now I have a little LED piece I can stick in there. Hmm. Anyway, folks, if you like what you see, please like, share, and subscribe. Please leave us a comment, if you would, down below here. If you're watching on your TV set, you can go back and comment later on via telephone. Um, and we really appreciate it, and it helps the algorithm out. And we love all of our regular viewers. Thank you very much for coming back. We know that there's a ton of content being produced out there for nerd stuff. So we really appreciate you spending just a little bit of your time with us. Thank you. We'll see you again very soon, I'm sure. I'm going to start filming another episode right now, probably. These sometimes take a day or two to put together, believe it or not. It looks slipshod, but it's actually finely crafted art. Anyway, take it easy, everybody. We will see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.